Hi there, I'm Tommy Carbone, Maine author and regional explorer, bringing you news, history, and fun facts from the Maine coast to the Maine North Woods. Today, we're back up in the Moosehead Lake region, exploring Little Wilson Stream and Little Wilson Falls. It's a beautiful scenic hike, so come on, let's go explore. Hello, glad you could join me today. I am driving in on Little Wilson Falls Road, which takes you to the beginning of the trailhead. There is also a parking area out along Elliottsville Road as you come in from Monson or in the opposite direction from Willimantic. Right off the road, there's a fair good number of spots there. Today I'm driving in because I have my camera equipment and there are thunderstorms on the radar just over Monson. It's all red and purple. So I'm hoping we're going to stay dry for this video shoot. As you're driving through here, you might notice there are a couple spots along the right side on the way in that are day use areas and if there's nobody there it's a good chance to stop and get out and check out the stream. As we're driving in I'm going to give you an orientation as to where we are in Maine, what's here and what's around here as far as the streams and ponds and stay tuned because we're going to talk about the history of this area and what went on here along these falls in the late 1800s. We are in an area of Maine, a place I love up here by Moosehead Lake. South of Moosehead and just east of Monson, in the area of Little Wilson Stream and Big Wilson Stream. Little Wilson Stream flows just below Little Wilson Pond and Moose Pond, which are not the headwaters of the stream at all, but it travels to the east and intersects with Big Wilson Stream. Right near the road there, where you would have parked. And that's where Big Wilson Falls are and you can hike a very small path, which I'll show you later, down to see those big falls. Big Wilson Stream gets its head of water from the upper and lower Wilson Ponds just outside of Greenville up near the airport. Travels down through Big Wilson Gorge. The most impressive part of Little Wilson Stream is the really big drop of falls, about 80 feet of Little Wilson Falls, which is about a mile, a mile point two from the inner parking lot, or about a mile and three quarter walk from the outer parking lot. Just to the west of Little Wilson Falls are those three ponds, Little Wilson Pond, Moose Pond, and Prescott Pond, very remote, nice ponds. The actual headwaters though for Little Wilson Stream occurs all the way over by Shirley Corner in a bog which you might find on a map labeled as Haskell Swamp. That area there has a lot of importance for the topic we're going to talk about today. But first, let's go explore the trail and the falls. Here where the trail begins, you don't have to go far off the trail as you're hiking up to see the falls and pitches along the stream. There are several places for good views of the rushing water. Walking along at the lower end of Lower Wilson Stream, you'll see a number of pigeons with a fair amount of flow most of the year. Sometimes, we'll take a walk here without even taking the hike up to the top. It's an impressive little gorge along this stream. But today, we're going to continue on and head up to the large drop at the top. Before you get to the high drop, you'll merge onto the Appalachian Trail for a bit. Pay attention on your way back, or you might end up in Georgia. You'll find that the trail veers away from the stream for a time, and you might not hear the water as much. Today was a hot, humid 85 degrees, so I thought I'd share a few clips from cooler weather back in the spring when we took the hike up. That day it was muddy down below, but as we got up in elevation, there were still significant portions of the trail that were covered in ice. And as we didn't bring any crampons or cleats, we had to go slow in spots where we couldn't step to the sides. I had brought along these L.L. Bean Ridge Runner extendable trekking poles to try out. I had tested them before heading out, but no matter what I tried that day, the clamps would not hold tight. 
In the end, they were more dangerous to use than to go without. The extendable sections just would not lock in no matter how I tightened them. They kept collapsing in, just when I needed the support. So I can't recommend them, and I'll be looking for non-extendable ones to use. Here we are now at the top where the largest drop on Little Wilson Stream occurs. It was a sunny day, and the light was reflecting off the ice that was still present along the rocks. By the way, the names of the falls on Big Wilson Stream and Little Wilson Stream of Big Wilson Falls and Little Wilson Falls have nothing to do with the drop or the size of the falls that occur on those streams, and all to do with the names of the streams that the falls occur on. I mention this because you might notice that some person has marked the rocks along Little Wilson Stream, labeling the falls near the bottom, Little Wilson Falls and then up near the top, Big Wilson Falls. That would be incorrect. Big Wilson Falls are out by the road. Little Wilson Falls are all the falls you'll see along the one mile or so stretch of Little Wilson Stream from the large drop here at the top to the ones down below. Oh, and on a point of main historical clarification, as this stream here is on Piscataquis waters, I'm calling the drop over the cliff the falls, and the area of white water would be a pitch. However, if we were on Penobscot waters, we'd call this large drop over the cliff a pitch. If we were river drivers, we'd certainly have to carry around such a pitch. Whereas the term falls along the Penobscot rivers were applied to an area of white water where there weren't large drops off of cliffs, but rather the river fell rapidly past boulders on the way downstream. It was on falls the drivers would run their boats down. Sometimes they made it, sometimes they didn't. So the meaning of falls versus a pitch in Maine depends upon where you are. Confusing? <laughs> you bet, especially if you were a French Kennebecker river driver who didn't understand too much English and took a job on Penobscot waters. Woe to that French boatman who confused the boss's directions to run the falls. Nowadays, the only thing you'll see running over these falls is water. But back in the 1800s, plenty of logs went down the stream. This map is courtesy of William Geller. From his paper, 832,000 acres, Maine's 1825 fire, and its Piscataquis logging aftermath. A zoom in of the map shows where Little Wilson Stream begins up near Shirley Corner, flows through past Little Wilson Falls, and down and merges into Big Wilson Stream. The few families that originally settled in this area tried to farm the land, but within a season or two they realized it was no good for crops. Around 1825, Nelson Savage had built the first mill right along Little Wilson Stream. His initial customers were the local inhabitants who needed wood to build their farmhouses and barns. Savage was not only the mill owner, he was also the postmaster, and the stage road that ran from Monson to Greenville at that time passed right by his mill. Once it was determined that the local area was no good for farming, the residents who had built homes there turned to logging. They cleared their land and drove the logs through Savage's mill down Little Wilson Stream. Now we have photo evidence of what it was like with the large jams on larger rivers, but here you can see the water level in Little Wilson Stream above the falls. Driving logs on Little Wilson Stream, which is very narrow and shallow in places, must have been extremely frustrating. Here we are at the top of Little Wilson Falls, and you can see you can hop across the rocks. And you can imagine what had happened to the timber once it went over that cliff of the 80-foot drop of Little Wilson Falls. Logs that went over that 80-foot drop splintered, shattered, cracked, and split. And those that didn't formed jams down at the bottom.
This old negative shows the river drivers lined up and down along the gorge just below the 80 foot drop. Up at the top, you can see a modern day stream explorer checking over the drop. And our four legged friends enjoy this hike on a hot summer day, so bring them along. The falls and pitches along Little Wilson Stream are interesting for the various large drops and long pitches along the route. It's a great place to go explore. A few of these pictures are from back in the spring when there was still ice along the banks and chunks of ice from the spring freshet were flowing down the stream. All right, so here we are at Big Wilson Falls now along Elliottsville Road right there with the bridge. And there's a small hiking trail that you can take down to the rocks here along the falls. It's quite an impressive amount of water going along here. There used to be a mill. There's a picture of the old bridge at the mill site. The people that settled here twice abandoned this area. And the village of Willimantic moved farther down to where it is today. In 1879, David Stone Libby, under his pen name Penobscot, wrote, this magnificent stream, which in any other state would be called a river, flowing from a noble pond through a succession of wooded hills and mountains, fed by a multitude of sparkling brooks, clear as crystal, seems designed by nature as the very home of the beautiful and agile fish which formerly populated its waters by thousands. You can read David's full essay and many of his other articles in the new annotated book, David Stone Libby, He Was Penobscot. Not too far from where we were exploring today is Lake Onawa. Here you can see the old Crib Works Dam and in the background, Borestone Mountain. You can read a lot more about this area of Maine from Sebec and Onawa all the way past Moosehead to the Allagash in Hubbard's Guide to Moosehead Lake in northern Maine. In this annotated edition, you'll even find out how Borstone Mountain was originally spelled and why it was changed. If you know of other Maine place names that have been changed, leave your answers in the comments. And here's a bonus, a pitch to check out just down the road. Toby Falls, also along Wilson Stream, has some local logging history as well. The falls were originally known as Greenwood Falls. The story goes that in the early 1800s, Alexander Greenwood was the head man of a drive crew. After the last log went over, the river drivers were resting along the shore, likely eating baked beans and sipping tea from their tim dippers. It was then, with the roar of the falls beside them and the wind whipping through the treetops, that Alexander was struck on the head from a falling tree limb, and he was killed. When you're in the woods, be sure to watch where you step and keep an eye out above you. And for those true stories about the river drivers of Maine, check out The Penobscot Man, Life and Death on a Maine River. Thanks for watching and this short episode about Little Wilson Stream and Little Wilson Falls. If you're up in the area, go take a hike. It's a great little place to go explore. Don't forget, before you leave, hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss the next episode of My Maine Matters. See you out on the trail.